Okay, welcome to our uh, session of Norland Unwrapped. We're just going to wait a few moments so everybody can join us and everybody can access the logons. So I can see the numbers going up, so that's always a good sign. You've all got the right details. So we'll just wait a few more seconds for those um, to log on in this glorious evening. Thank you so much for coming in. Okay, nope, still going up. Yep. Give it another couple of seconds. I'm going to give it one about another 10 seconds and then we'll make a start. Bro, I think we're ready, ready to go. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us for our uh, Norland Dome Wrap session this evening. Um, just to give you a little bit of basic housekeeping. Um, this session will be recorded and your um, mute button will be muted, obviously, and your camera will be off. So please don't worry about that. Joe, can I ask you to turn to the first screen, please? Thank you very much. So um, this is our uh, third session of Norland Unwrapped, and there will be opportunity for questions at the end of the presentation, as always, on the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So as we go through the presentation, if there's burning questions that you want to ask, please do ask them. Um, you, my name is Kate Morgan, if you didn't know already, you may remember me from the other sessions, the degree and the practical skills sessions. Um, if you've joined us before, fantastic, thank you so much for joining us again. If it's your first time of joining us, you're really welcome, it's lovely to have you with us this evening. I know the weather is lovely, so um, I expect you'd rather be sat outside, but this is a really nice way of obviously meeting with you um, in a very informal environment. So I hope you enjoy the next hour as well. We do have lots of virtual uh, recordings available as well, which are available on our website. So if you have, you want more information, then please do visit our website. There are the virtual recordings from our recent virtual open morning and tour. That's fantastic. If you have a chance to look at that, if you haven't already, please do so. Um, and we've also got all the other Norland Unwrapped sessions as well. So please feel free to have a look on that. That's at norland.ac.uk um, stroke events. So next session, please, Joe. Lovely. Okay, as I mentioned, this is our third session. And the reason why we've done this session this evening is because we do get lots of questions about placements. And we did get a lot of questions following our feedback from the degree and the diploma practical skills session. So we actually thought it was pretty warranted to have a full hour, which is fantastic. Um, so we've set this up this evening. We've got wonderful staff and students who are going to talk you everything you need to know about placements and then some. Um, and there's a fantastic opportunity to find out more about studying at Norland and what placements, how they fit in with the course and what our students are up to um, on their placements. So it's a really good opportunity to do that. Again, at the moment, we can't welcome you back for a physical open day. Hopefully that will change in the autumn and this will be um, the gap between that. So the virtual and the physical. And it's just another way of really touching base with you guys out there and you can find out a bit more about us. Um, the Norland Unwrap series has been very popular, which is really good, and it has covered quite a, a variety of topics. The next session we're hoping will be probably in the next academic year, so from September onwards, and that will be focused on our newly qualified year, and then forwarding on that would be the Norland Agency. Obviously, placements um, will, will be this evening, and then the newly qualified year would take us to that next level, um, and I know Rosie can possibly touch on that later on. <laughs> Just about to prepare for that, aren't you, Rosie? Okay, so um, next slide, please, if that's okay. All right, I'm gonna pass you over to Jo, and she's gonna explain everything there is to know about placements. That's enough from me now. And I will talk back with you at the end for the Q&A session. So like I said, please ask those questions and we'll get through them as much as we can after the presentation. Thanks, Jo. Hello, I'm Jo Brimble and welcome to Norland and Matt. Um, I am the um, placement manager and me and the team are here to support students to set up placements 
um, to support them through the process and then to analyze um, and assess the placements at the end of it. Okay, uh, we work with a variety of different placements um, from the families to the settings and the idea of our placements are to build on confidence and practice skill skills to help them to become nannies in their future careers. Okay. Um, we have a variety of different placements and um, we're based obviously in Bath and we're very privileged um, to have a large collection of um, different placements, settings and families that we can work with. Okay. Um, my previous role is that I worked in FE and um, I joined Norland in 2017 and I've just finished my master's degree. Lucy. Hi, I'm Lucy. Um, I'm also a member of the placement team. I've been working at Norland uh, for about three years now and joined the placement team about two years ago. Um, I myself am a Norlander. I trained very many years ago. Um, we won't go into quite how many, um, but when the college was based back in Hungerford, um, I then worked as a nanny um, for nearly 18 years, mainly in London, which is where I sort of grew up. Um, but I also worked overseas, Grand Cayman, which is amazing, working on cruise ships in the children's clubs there. Um, and then I've got my own daughter now and we moved out of London about three and a half years ago. Um, and that's how I ended up back at Norland. And, you know, as Joe said, our role is to, to visit the students on placement, support them with those placements, see how they're getting on. Um, and yeah, it's been a great experience. There you go. So the placements are broken down and over your three years, you will find that each placement sort of feeds into the next one, okay? Um, they're very much the challenges increase as the placement continues over the three years and the diploma is embedded within the degree so it really is that you bring in your your theorist sort of training into your practical placements so there's a lovely balance of theory and practical work together. Um, in your first year you will start with doing the nurseries and um, the schools this is obviously to broaden your knowledge of um, curriculums and the early years foundation stage. Um, and then towards the end of your first year, you will move into um, a family placement. The second year, you start with the challenges of what we call a daily or live-in placement. And this is where you either go on a day-to-day -day basis or you go to live with a family. And all of our placements um, at the start of your second year will be based in Bath and the surrounding areas, okay? And obviously, depending on the distance, will depend whether it's a daily placement or whether it is that you go to live with the families. All of our families are registered before that you um, are to join them. Um, we choose your placements and they are all registered, um, which means that we've also done spot checks for security too, okay? The end of your second year, we have a massive placement, which is really exciting. It's called the residential. And this is where you go and live with the family. You work 11 hours a day, and this is the closest sort of placement to your working world as a nanny. Um, and again, so we've widened the area. We also go out to Southwest London because that's where the majority of the jobs are coming up for NQN. Um, and it's a great experience to, um, to get a feel of what would you like to do in your future? Would you like to work somewhere rural or is London something that you are interested in? We try to keep them within the SW postcode purely for visiting purposes. We go out for a very, very short period of time to um, visit. And um, obviously, anybody who knows London, London traffic is where that it can take you ages just to go from one place to the other. And then in your third year, we really look to see um, what you need to support you. Um, what do you need to help you to be that successful nanny to lead you on to NQN, okay? And it might just be that actually you've done really well in your placements and you quite fancy you're doing something different like a forest school, um, or actually we think, you need a little bit more experience so we're looking at what sort of challenges and again offering you a variety of different family dynamics because obviously we work with um, multiple children we work with newborns we work with children with um, large family numbers and um, there's a, all sorts of different family dynamics that we work alongside okay and then your final placement is um, a residential and we also look to help to embed it within to your dissertation so again we look to see if we can make those lovely matches to support you both academically academically and with your practical skills at this point in time. Okay, so we are, like I said, we are privileged to have access to um, 
a wide variety of placements. And this includes that we are the only people who are allowed to go on the maternity and pediatric ward with the RUH outside of medical profession. So we are very privileged to have that and we make full use of our maternity ward placements. Um, we also have a um, placement called Woodland Adventures that is a forest school. Now, whilst forest schools are quite popular at the moment, this is a, um, basically is in the woods and there is no indoor area beyond a shed. So <laughs> we go all through the year to go and visit and luckily we're only there for an hour compared to students who are there for four weeks and um, it comes rain, so <laughs> shine. Um, but it's another really exciting placement and the students learn so much about how the outdoor space um, helps to regulate children's emotions and behavior and it's a great learning experience. We're also very privileged to work with one of the largest chains of nursery within the Southwest. Um, and they are also run by somebody who is a Norlander. So we also are lucky to have people to demonstrate um, where your profession, not only as a Norlander, can go in the future. And like I said earlier, we've got different family placements based in Bath and Southwest London. Um, and we work with the preschools. We've got a very large um, special educational needs setting that welcome our students. And we work up to, um, basically it is up to year two. So again, helping you to fully understand those curriculums because obviously within your role, you might be um, going to help with homework. And these placements are all assessed by the placement team um, and they are based on obviously performance, appraisals, attendance. Um, and these are the things that are explained to you once you come to join how they are assessed at that point there. There you go. And this is just a, an example of how the balance of your time is whilst you're with us at Norland. There is a minimum of six placements um, so you'll get lots of variety within your time with us and it's one of the things that Rosie's going to come to about her Norland experience in a moment and there it is also that your hours that you spent in placement is just under 50% of the time and we are here also so if say sometimes placements go wrong which can do for a variety of different reasons and it could just be linked to health at the time there's always opportunity outside the academic year to make up any misplacements so we always encourage the students please do not worry if it goes wrong because there are there's always a backup plan we've always got a plan at Varsley for placement team. There you go. Okay, so that's a bit about placements. I'm going to introduce you to Tippy, and Tippy is our student engagement rep for us on placements. Hello, my name's Tippy, and I'm in set 44 um, in my first year. I'm just about to finish at Norland, and I'm from Bath, but I am living with five other Norland students um, just by Norland in Oldfield Park at the moment. And um, I've come from a background of A levels, so I studied biology, psychology, and philosophy. And ethics at school so I didn't come from a, a early years the learning background and so I was quite in the new with it when coming to Norland um, but it was something that I've always had a passion about and before coming to Norland I've been lucky enough to have experience such as babysitting and working in nurseries I volunteer in the maternity wards in Southfield Hospital in Bristol and I've also been lucky enough to volunteer abroad in different countries and I think from having those experiences before really highlighted to me what I really wanted to do and that child, like working with children in the early years was something that I loved and just something that was fun uh, and I think that's why I chose to come to Norland and for me coming to Norland I saw them in Bath and I never really thought of it so I used to see the uniform I knew people that went to Norland and for me I was like no it's not I was I was not sure I was quite hesitant and um, I it was when I was on a school trip I got to volunteer an orphanage and a lady said to me, you should look at Norland. And I've done the thing, I've watched the documentary and I knew a bit about it. And then I came to the open day and I'm someone that's always liked small and I like having like a sense of family. And I literally came to the open day and I thought, this will do me, I was happy. And I felt like supported just even on my first day. Everybody knew each other, you was supported throughout. And I think even though despite restrictions this year, and even though my first year hasn't been a normal first year, I haven't really noticed a dis difference at all. I mean, we've been lucky enough to have most of our lectures face-to-face. -face. Uh, we've had only a little bit online and all our placements have, we've had very little changes at all. And I've been fortunate that I've been able to go on every single placement that I've had this year, which has been a great opportunity. And by being able, by Norland helping us not be stopped by the restrictions, 
has meant that our, like my first year has been pretty much normal if that makes sense and so I've been able to be supported and then that means when I'm on things such as my new placements I've been able to walk in being confident and being ready to do each placement which has made this year truly amazing. Can I have the next slide please? Perfect. Uh, so what have I done so far? So my first placement was in a year one and two classroom. It was I remember it's crazy how fast this year has gone because I remember walking in on my first day and thinking that I have not got a clue and I was like I don't know what I'm doing and I walked in and it was 40 year one and two students and it was just me and the teacher on my first day and I literally thinking I was like I don't know if I could do this but then looking back on it and I did four weeks in that setting I could go back now and have the best time which I really did and then from all my other places that I've had so far. So I've been in a preschool room with 56 three-year-olds, which is really interesting, to then being in a toddler room. And then I'm now currently on my first family placement with an eight week old baby and a two-year-old, which this is my first family placement. So something I've never done before. And by having those different environments, so being in a school to being in a preschool, by having them before my family has really made me feel a bit more ready and more confident to go into something like that. And by building those connections. So when you're on placement, Norlin, make sure that you have a mentor. So someone who works at the setting or a family. So they're there to help you with your paperwork and to also do your appraisals and to say things with you. And they will give you comments or things to improve on or things to reflect on, or this is why they do such things. And like, it's really helped me become ready for this first family placement because that's pretty much what we'll be doing in our future selves as Norlanders. We'll be working with families. So by working in the settings, you see how they do such things. And it's a chance for you to understand what you like, what you don't like, what you're not good at yet, or what you're going to be better at eventually. And it's really helped me become ready. And it's made me feel a bit more prouder in myself and have more, a bit more respect for myself and what I do in, in my practice whilst being a student. Um, but the placements overall are super fun. They're tiring, I'll be honest, but they are super fun. Today with my family, uh, we went on a lovely walk in the sun. We had an eventful time at the garden centre with lots of tantrums, I'll be honest, um, to then coming home, having messy play. And it was a great chance for me that mum let me have quite a lot of time with the newborn, which is something which I really enjoyed and just a quite a great moment just to have like one-on-one -on -one time and just to relax in a nice way after having quite fun with the toddler. Um, and another great thing about placements is the networking opportunities. So no placements, like I said, are the same. And you meet very different people, different children, different age ranges, different families. And from that, you're learning different things to apply for different families. So last week I was working for a family of four month old twins and I learned how she did something with feeding bottles and it was something that I was able to apply for the baby yesterday and it and the family could, like didn't know that that was a thing and it was quite a great opportunity for me to show what I learned with other families how I can change my practice to that which is really good and it's also a great chance for job opportunities. Um, I've had loads of babysitting opportunities. I've also got my summer job, which I'm working for a family for this year, which I'm really looking forward to. And I've also been able to have the chance to have newborn experience. So I got to work with a newborn baby, a four week old baby, um, which was a great opportunity. And I felt so lucky for a family to have let me into their home, to let me be part of the early days of the baby, which is really great. Next slide, please. And so, and for the future, so it's quite scary thinking about it that the first year is already gone and considering COVID and everything, it doesn't feel like we've had COVID when on placements and things like that. Um, maybe it might be different for Rosie because obviously she was here before, um, before COVID and things like that, but I've never known what it was like, but nothing has really gotten in my way for say, when you're on placement, you're in the bubbles. So there wasn't that much mask wearing. Um, you could be with the children, you can interact. And so there was no restrictions and there was no restrictions to the support. So you also have your placement mentors at Norland and they can come for visits and they can still support you. So there's no boundaries to the support. And if you're worried, you can still get that despite everything that has been going on. Um, but it's also been a great chance for us to have these different environments, see the different age ranges, 
And it's a great chance. And as Joe said, there's a minimum of six placements you can have at your time. It's an amazing chance for us to really, truly see what we like. We can see what age ranges we want to work with, what abilities, whether it's rural, whether it's working in the city. And then it's a great chance for us. So when we do qualify and become future Norlanders, it's sort of us preparing us for pretty much anything. And so I'm really excited to see where second and third year and then my NQN year takes me next. Thank you. Thank you, Tippy. There you go, Rosie, over to you. Hi, so I'm Rosie and I am a third year student, just finishing my final few weeks of employment weeks now. I'm also head of the Norland Choir before Norland. Again, like Tippy, I did A-levels in business studies, food technology and English language. Um, I was very much wanting to come to Norland since the age of 10. It was my lifelong dream and passion working with children. Um, so that's all I worked towards, like doing so much babysitting and childcare, like getting childcare experience so that I could come to Norland. Um, and yeah, the aspects of Norland which really appealed to me and which I've really enjoyed being like surrounded by in that environment is the sense of community and continued support throughout with like both your like fellow peers and staff like you can go and speak to anyone at Norland and they will support you with anything and then placement and food and nutrition lectures are definitely the two highlights of my time training so far. I have undertaken a whole range and variety of placements um, some of these are slightly different as I was affected by COVID, but nonetheless, they have really helped me develop as a nanny and allowed me to develop different skills and practices. So um, if you go on to the next slide, I can talk you through them. So in first year, I started off in a nursery unit and this took a forest school approach. It's really nice to be able to take the babies outside and look at that pedagogical style and how we can bring outdoors inside and different like how nature can really be brought into play. Um, then I then was able to do my maternity care assistant like that position on the maternity ward helping um, with pre and postnatal mothers. This I felt so privileged to have this placement so early on and I was also able to visit the NICU unit and like help out with some very tiny babies. It was so lovely to see babies from that very first moment they're born and how everyone is individual, but very adorable, as well as being supportive of parents as well. There's lots of worried parents. It's really nice to just sit and chat them and demonstrate to them in tailing, bathing, putting a nappy on for those first parents, like newborn parents and things like that. Um, following that, I was then in a reception class and my reception class, had 30 in the morning and then 45 in the afternoon. So it was very, very busy, but it was great fun. I'd often ca carry out activities with small groups of children. And we also did a lot of school trips, which they're also a great bonus of going on placements, going on the school trips as well. And then I did a taste placement in a toddler room at a nursery. And I also volunteered out with, out with the breakfast clubs. This had the older children as well as the younger children. So it's really nice to see that range again. Um, and here I really enjoyed like setting up tough trays and just toddlers are such a fun age so getting messy and when exploring activities. I then took on my first um, family taste placement which is what Tippy is doing now. Um, again every family is unique and this one offered me a very unique experience as my one of my charges um, was fed by a nasogastric tube so I had the privilege and of learning that skill and how to insert that and it really made me aware of each of each child's individual needs and every family's needs um so i'll just talk about my second year placements now please so in second year i did a daily placement well between second and third year, i actually did my newborn experience like tippy um and my baby was very like three days old um and i did this through my summer holidays um a lot of my focus was not only with the newborn, but also with the toddler and helping the toddler transition to a new sibling in the family. And it was great fun. It was over summer holidays. We did a lot of playing outside, but also having that newborn experience again, building on what I've learned on the maternity ward really has helped me develop and like, like focus in on those skills. And then I did a year two class in second year. Um, 
And that was really fun working again with older children. And at that school, I took part in all the lessons from like French to PE. And it was really nice to spend the whole day of my class. And I like the aspect of this school, you ate even late lunch with the children. Um, I got to learn each of the children individually and learn what they really like, as well as learning how to take like work along the curriculum and teach like certain aspects of the class. This was followed by a daily placement. So this was a month where I lived with the family and I really wanted to focus on helping my discipline skills as I knew there's something I was struggling with and this family supported that as we had a toddler and the mum was very much supportive of me carrying out discipline and that being my role whilst I was there as well as helping with overcome picky eating habits. And then finally, I was meant to do my residential placement in this time last year, but instead we did a virtual placement and I actually really enjoyed this virtual placement, um, as bizarre as it sounds. So we had to do a six week booklet and the placement team will, would email us every couple of days with these scenarios, which you might be faced with when nannying. And it really made you come so much more imaginative um, about your practice and things. So you'd be keeping a nanny diary, and I would to have a focus of the week, either like create the activities or some of the dishes on my menu plans, as you know, what else they should do during lockdown. So I really took it on board and got very involved with my virtual placement. And it was also a great way of getting like ready with that placement paperwork and also the nanny paperwork I am expected to do on my NQN year. So it was a good skill to practice all of that. So in third year, I then did my residential placement at the very beginning of third year. I was in Wimbledon and I had the most loveliest family. Um, and I had a baby boy who was six months and a, my other charge turned three. And I got to carry out weaning. I was given sole charge of the, uh, the baby's weaning and I literally fell in love with weaning and it inspired my dissertation. Um, yeah, having the residential placement, I loved it. Um, it was really hard to leave at the end and it was so good to get that sense of what it's like to sort of be in the real nanny world working those long days it was tiring but it was great fun and building those bonds with the children the picture on the left is the cake I made for my charge's third birthday she requested a banana cake but wanted one with like the princess doll in it so it was a sugar-free banana cake but the icing was sort of slightly sugary so um don't know if that helped at all but it was great fun doing that and then for my dissertation placement my dissertation family were actually friends of my residential family so I then went to Balham in London and because I wanted to focus on weaning I had again very similar ages another six month old and a two and a half year old but the two and a half year old again had fussy eating habits so I, the family really allowed me to explore my passion for food nutrition and allow both like me to take control of both the children's diets and all the menu planning. Again, living with them for a month, I chose to do another live-in to get myself ready for NQN, as I think it's so important. And also it was so nice to be in London because I'd go up to things like Clapham Common and you'd see all of the other Norlanders and there's a real sense of community, um, which makes me very excited for what's coming in the next few months, but yeah. That's, yeah, sort of it. <laughs> Thank you, Rosie. Fantastic. Thank you, Phil. I was so interested to hear all that. It's brilliant. We do have questions. If you want to send more questions in, you're more than welcome to do that. But we do have some questions to start with. It makes me want to go on placement. Can I go? It sounds amazing. You both inspired me. Can I come out? <laughs> I'd love to come and visit. Um, it just sounds so interesting. And, you know, it just... It really does show how much, how many placements and how in depth, you know, the training off we offer is. I think it's fantastic. Thank you so much for that. It was really, really helpful. Um, I do have questions, so I will start sending them over to you if that's okay. My first question actually is to Lucy, because Lucy is a Norlander and I want to know, uh, one of the questions we've been asked is, um, what made you decide to be a Norland nanny? Oh, it's a very, <laughs> this is a very strange you story. That long ago, it's not really. <laughs> I, I can sort of remember that far back. Um, it, if I start from the very beginning, um, I actually wanted to be a vet. <laughs> um, but I was allergic to anything and everything with fur. 
Um, so decided that specializing in goldfish wasn't going to be for me. Um, and then when I was 10, uh, my mum uh, childminded for a little boy. He was a friend, uh, friend's little boy. And instant, instantly knew that was it. Um, that's what I was going to do. And, you know, I remember at 10 saying, I'm going to be a childminder like you. Um, and my parents were were like, if you want to work with children, you need to go to Norland. Like, it's the best. And I hadn't obviously heard of it at that time. Looked into it, found out about Norland and was sold 100%. Um, so applied as soon as I could, as soon as I sort of got the results that I needed. Um, and it, that was it. There was, you know, there was nothing else that I wanted to do. And there still isn't, you know, I, I absolutely have no regrets. Um, you know, I've, I've, although I'm not working directly with children anymore, I love the fact that I can bring all my experience into what I do um, and yeah it was the best thing best thing ever <laughs> lovely that's fantastic I do have a question uh, for Joe. it's um, obviously you've mentioned about the first the second and the third year how many placements do you have per year so in your first year you do three in your second year you do three and in your third year you do two okay and is that um, obviously you mentioned earlier on if, if there's an issue with one of those placements does it just roll over to the following year what we do is we'll bring you in for a conversation and then what we'll do is um, look to do them. So once the academic year um, finishes, we will then see if you're not working anywhere that you can come and join us for another placement. So usually I know we've got quite a few students because of COVID and self-isolating earlier on this year. Um, so therefore they haven't had that opportunity to go out in November when obviously it was quite rife. Um, so they're joining us um, from the start of, um, sorry, the end of June and, um, and they're going for four weeks, so yeah, to the middle of July. Um, and that's fine because it's very common. Um, and again, you get um, the smaller group numbers. So you, again, you get that lovely, more sort of supportive nature that we do with the staff um, supporting the students. Thank you very much. Uh, my next question is actually to Rosie. Um, you mentioned nanny paperwork. Can you make, just go into a little bit more detail about what's expected in that paperwork? What do you so, need to do? So you have both like Norland placement paperwork, which prepares you for nanny paperwork and what we need to complete on our NQN year and as we continue as a Norlander. So placement paperwork is all about activity plans, menu plans, um, triparties, reflections, everything like that, which helps you have a successful placement and be organised. And then nanny paperwork, again, follows on menu plans. And the nanny diary is a very important thing we keep, along with learning journals. Nanny diary is a form of communication between you, fellow caregivers and the parents. And basically, I find them really fun to do. Like my virtual placement was a massive nanny diary. And you just document your day, what you do with the children, and any important things like if a child has an accident or you know if there's a medical emergency you can you it's it's a way of supporting you and the children it has your back at all times and it's a good form of communication learning journals we also do are a way of assessing children's developmental stages and we have wow moments and it allows us to create activities based off their interests and further areas of development for that child and support them and it's a nice thing for parents also to look through um, to see where their children have like further developed and things. Um, activity and menu plans are something we start doing um, with family placements and it's all about being organised. When I did my residential living placements, I was in charge of the Ocado order. So I had to have my menu plans done the week before and I did all my cooking, I love cooking. I did all my cooking whilst I was there for the whole family and the weaning. So it really helps you get prepared and everything. And this is something I'll then be continuing on my NQN year. Fantastic. Um, Tippy, this one's for you actually. Obviously, obviously you're coming to the end of your first year, which is great. Um, and we're gonna have to take you back a little bit further. So my question is, are there, is there any advice with regards to preparation for interviews? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um, for interviews, um, I remember mine. Obviously, it might be different for some people because I know that it's on Zoom um, and you can't really go in at the moment. Um, I'm not quite sure how they're doing it. But I remember going into the interview and for me, I was quite lucky that I knew an Orland student who was in first year at that time. And she always recommended to like be yourself, truly. And you'll get, it, it's really chilled out nature. So even if it's online or if it's, 
you're going face to face. One of my housemates, she did hers online and she said it was pretty much like the chillest thing she's ever done. She she like said, she was like, I don't see what the fuss is about. Um, and it is, they just want to know about you. They're not really, they want to know that what you love and which is pretty much like the early years and children but they also want to know about yourself and what you love I love I have I love animals I have horses so I talked about that and I talked about how I love going to the outdoors because that's all like applicable stuff to Norland they if you love music that's something you can bring to Norland because you've got the choir which Rosie does and it's something that you can also bring to when you're working with children and things like that so they really want to know about you um and I think you do have to say, do a little talk about yourself, but you literally just say who you are and why they should pick you. And it is it is really just a calm manner. It's nothing intense. It's not like The Apprentice or anything. It's just a like a calm chat, which it was really nice because I remember building myself up and I was like, oh God, here we go. But it, it was something, I remember mine, it was just really calm and just relaxed. Was it the same for you, Rosie, as well? Um, yes, yeah, so my one was in person. Um, I actually been to an open day like a month before and then like my, that was my third open day. I'd like dragged my parents along to open day since I was 15. Um, and I'd been to an open day before and I remember asking a current student like, what should I do? What will make me stand out? And I have a passion for sports and I was also a children's tennis coach. And we had to bring something along about your experiences with children. So I brought along a children's tennis racket and ball and in my group presentation, I made the other participants do it with their non dominant hand so they could feel how tricky it was for a child because I'd coach children ages two upwards. Um, and some people now still remember these tennis racket roses. I was the one who brought a tennis racket along. But I think that perhaps made me stand out. And that was what was personal to me and my experience as children. Um, I was very nervous going in, but it isn't that bad. The lecturers just really want to and see that you've got that passion for childcare and you don't need to have all the knowledge before you go. It's just that love and passion for children and working with children and in that early year sector, really. Fantastic, brilliant. Uh, Jen, carry on. Um, I'd just like to say that if you are doing any sort of practical work with children is to collect your evidence. Um, obviously don't take photos unless you've got permission, but um, photos of activities that you've done, because what you'll find is coming to interview, if you feel that you're drying up or you've got nothing to say, actually having some visual clues of what you've done in your past will keep you nice and calm and it will just keep your conversation flowing, okay? Um, we've noticed it before with quite a lot of students, especially if you know that you get nervous, um, it's just when you feel like you've got nothing else to say, it's okay, because I've got something else that can represent. And for us at the other side, then we can start asking you questions and everything then starts calming down um, and you'll find it's a great help to you. Fantastic, good advice. Um, this actually is for Joe. There's, there's two parts to this question actually. So I'm answering two questions. What is the what is usually the oldest age of the charge that you'll be placed with? And is two charges the most common number you will look after in your placement? Oh, good questions. Um, our ages of children actually go up. We don't have an upper limit. Um, we tend to take on families that have an under two year old. Um, and then obviously the older child can be um, however old. We've got quite um, a large family on our books at the moment. And the oldest child is up to the age of um, 12. But like I said, we tend to take them on, recruit them in the first instance with an under two and, um, you know, whoever comes over that age is, is always good. Um, again, pre-COVID, it used to be two children under the age of four, but we have widened this much, much wider um, on the basis that, um, you know, families have been reluctant over this academic year. Um, but actually... Um, it's also helped us to experiment about what it's like to have maybe just one child on a placement um, and then to look at having children over the age of two and, and how does that support students training. So COVID has in some ways also pushed us into explore different avenues that maybe we wouldn't have done um, previous to that. And then the other question was um, how many children? Yes, uh, two charges is the most common number you look after in your placement. Um, do you know what, very interestingly, um, I would say yes for around Bath, but going to London is mostly three children. Um, a lot of our placements have three children. Um, so yes, you could be expected to work with, um, I think the most we've got on our books currently is um, five children. Um, we've got quite a few triplets families. Um, so yes, and also we have blended families and that obviously increases the numbers 
Um, but we work, with, like I said earlier, we work with every family dynamic. And it's really, it's what part of making placements is, as Rosie said, you know, the fact that every family is unique and you get to learn to, when you feel that you've got the skills, then you learn to adapt those skills to that particular family and to move on. Fantastic. Um, there is a question regarding, actually, Lucy might be able to answer this one for me. Um, do you have to pay for food and expenses while you're on residential? No. So when you're when you're working with the families, um, you generally you will eat with the children. So um, the meals that you're preparing, um, you you will eat with the children. Um, obviously, once you're off duty at the weekends, if you stay with the family, then that's up to you. Um, but no sort of accommodation and your and your food while you're on duty is provided by the family. Um, and then as a sort of little thank you to them, um, the students will, over the course of a residential placement, will offer the family two evenings of babysitting um, so that if the parents can or want to go out, they can have a couple of evenings out. Um, and that's sort of a, you know, thank you to, to them. Yeah, <laughs> a thank you to them for sort of, you know, providing their board and lodgings for the, for the course of the placement. You do have to pay for travel. Um, travel to placements is expected. Um, so we often say to the second years at the start of the academic year to save up ready for the residential. So because it is such a draining experience, um, you need to be sort of financially prepared that you can just focus on that placement rather than taking on part time jobs. There is an allowance for placements over um, eight miles. Um, which is a four pound return journey. So it's there just to, as a supportive nature, um, but obviously it doesn't take over from the cost. So just, again, just be prepared. And for students who really want that experience, they will do what they need to do. And whether that is that they save their Christmas money or whether they work and keep that money together. But I think it's all about planning and planning your finances um, to make it that you, you can make the most of your time at placement at Norland. Fantastic. Um, the, this question actually for both Rosie and Tippy, if that's okay. Um, obviously, Ro uh, Tippy, you're a first year, and obviously, Rosie, you're a third year. Can you talk to me about a little bit about accommodation and how you were placed in the accommodation that you had, and obviously, moving forward in your second and your third year, uh, what accommodation you're in now and how that works? It's just we do get that answer that question quite a lot, so it's really lovely to hear from a first year who's just obviously gone through the process, and then obviously to Rosie. Um, obviously coming out of the process so if you want to just talk about what that means to you that would be fantastic um so for me so as I was from Bath and even my parents were in Bath I was like I need to after lockdown I was like I'll do the student bit and be part of it so I'm in a house of five students and um, we're very lucky we're in Oldfield Park which is literally a five minute walk um so for us it was sort of at Norland so Norland um, we'll sort out who you live with um, but you can sometimes you can email for preferences so if you need to be some like if you want a location I know a few people did do that um, but um, you can't you can choose whether it's a lively house um, a middly house like lively and quiet or a quiet house um, and I did middly house lively and quiet and um, it was really great because it's quite in the unknown you didn't know until quite the last minute so I think you don't really find out until just after you find out you've got your confirmed place at Norland so it was about a week afterward which was for me um and Norland will send over who you're living with and what your house is called so then that's the time you get on like right move and you can look at the house and the floor plans and then they then give you the information for your landlord and your tenant, and then you do that yourself. Um, so it is a little bit separate from Norland, so they don't really get involved. Um, they're not really there for the house issues, so you, you they know the landlord, so Norland have checked your houses. We've had one Norland check where they just made sure that everything was safe and that the house is still together. Um, and those houses they use every year. Um, so it, every first year we'll go to one of those group of houses that they've got. Um, which is really nice because as well, um, all the people in our year, we were put in touch with one of the tenants that is already in there. So if you find out where your house is, someone will let you know what student's in it right now. And I was able to be in contact with one of them. So she told me about the bills because I didn't have a clue. I'll be honest, I bought, we got into the house and I, I still don't really have a clue, but like I didn't know about bills. So it was quite handy that Norland was able to help arrange for us to know a bit about the house before we got there and it was great because I'll be honest in the unknown I had we've been put into a house with people that I don't know and 
we've had an amazing time and I'm very lucky that they're amazing people. Um, but for support in houses as well, I know people get worried about that. Norland really do help with that. So if you're ever worried, or even if you have a house quarrel, which is something that will always happen, Norland really do help as well, which is something that not a lot of people know. So that's good. Brilliant. And you, Rosie? Um, so if you like Tippy, I was put in with a house of three other Norland students. I was in a house of four, and we were quite a quiet house. Um, we're sort of at the end of our first year, we all went our own ways and I actually lodged with a family um, as I thought it would be a great way to practice for NQN and I really like the idea of like, the live-in placements, like residential placements, and then obviously doing live-in whilst on NQN. Um, and also I'm very much my own space person, so here I'm really fortunate, I have an attic room and on the suite. So it's very much my own space and um, the academic workload and workload steps up in second and third year. So it was really nice to have my own like, place to sort of study in the evenings, but I was still able to have like my friends around or like go and see my friends still have that more work-life balance. And now I'm looking through the jobs list and I feel very confident with what accommodation families have offered from doing like lodging with a family currently. Fantastic, wonderful. Um, I have a couple of questions. So um, Jo, um, for the live-in placements, what is the typical accommodation available for the students? Um, so live-in, usually it is um, a one bedroom. Um, when you do residential, we will let you know if it's a one bedroom and whether it's a shared bathroom or whether it's um, your own, like an ensuite room. Um, but with live-in, because it is more local to Bath, they do tend to be um, one bedroom and a shared bathroom. Um, when you go, I mean, it, it all depends on um, the household. Um, we have um, families with um, different accommodations. Sometimes you have your own floor, sometimes we've had people in annexes, um, and sometimes it is literally, you know, a smaller house um, where, you, where you live in very much in, in with the families. So um, they are a real variety. Um, and we try to give you a real mixture of that um, so that you get to experience um, the sort of intense nature of maybe living with a family. And then one also that's more spacious because when you do your NQN, these are the sort of things that you need to start to unpick to think about what type of family do I want to work with. Um, so even though sometimes placements aren't successful, what we always get the students to reflect on is, well, this is all to help you to realise what kind of employers, what kind of family dynamic, how many children, what sort of accommodation, which location, all of these different, um, different combinations. Um, and it will help you, you know, in your fourth year with us. Um, so that you can help to find that job that you will be successful in in your NQN year. Wonderful. Rosie, have you found that what you thought you would want as a family at the very beginning has changed since you've been doing placements and what you, you, you absolutely know that you want to work with or, you know, is that kind of changed as you've been going through the years with regards to what is available? Yeah, very much so, because obviously our jobs list came out on Friday, and to be honest, I was a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> it's bad that bit, isn't it, when the job list comes out? <laughs> yeah, I was a bit overwhelmed, like there's so many jobs on there, and they all offer amazing opportunities. Um, I knew I definitely wanted to be in London, and pre preferably southwest London, because of the Northern Network and just Nanny Network in that area, and I love the fact you've got all the like, different commons as well there. Um, however, I thought that perhaps one child, because it's like some people say it's less paperwork, but there's some jobs with three children. And I really like being busy on placements. I often, like Joe and Lucy will hate this, but I often do extra hours. I like being busy. I keep myself occupied. I always like, if I'm there at the weekend, I often throw my hands and I just am a really busy person. So actually from thinking one or two children in a very low key family has changed quite a busy family with like nursery drop offs or school pick ups or I think baby in there as well. I've always wanted a baby or a child around six months so I can do my weaning and nutrition. But yes, um, it has changed but my placements have shaped that regards parental input as well. The parents own perspectives on and their views on their like what they have they'd like their children to be brought up. Um, ideally you want someone with some ideologies to yourself um so yeah I have a tick list currently when I'm going through the jobs list trying to work out how like 
all the jobs are written by the families and some jobs come across in different ways so it's really hard to depict what but yeah there's a lot out there very exciting it's a very exciting time um lucy actually this is for you what um do you what do you wear on placement is there a, a practical uniform is there do you wear your own clothes so there's a practical uniform. So obviously we have the brown dress, which everybody knows about. Um, that's worn for lectures and, and formal occasions. But for working with children, we have a practical uniform, which is navy trousers and a polo shirt and a jumper. Um, this is obviously much more practical for working with children, getting down on the floor, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, if you're doing a live-in or a residential placement, you're living in with the family, then you can wear your own clothes. We do still have then sort of guidelines on what you can and can't wear. So it must still be appropriate for working with children. Things like hair must still be tied up, those sorts of things. Um, but yes, the, the, the practical uniform is much more appropriate for, for being able to get stuck in with the children. Fantastic. Um, this is a question for Tippy. Is there, uh, with regards to gaining experience, I know you touched on earlier about experience that you gained. Would you say that gaining uh, a lot of experience working with children prior to applying would be beneficial? Would you say gaining more experience, you know, would, would put you in good stead for coming to Norland? Yeah, it's a bit of a mixture, to be honest. So looking at, I remember meeting when you come to Norland, I was always worried as like have I got enough um have I done enough and I think everyone thinks that because there's always going to be someone that's done more or something like that and I'll be honest there's my housemate one of them had never done anything I think she babysat her cousin and she was like I don't know but it, it's good if you have experience because you then know that you want to do it I think having the experience before you come is a great idea because what if you've never done it before then you're when you're here you're here um but in a way, things like placements, they help you catch up. So everyone's on the same sort of placements and experiences. So we're all going to get those valuable skills, meaning that we're ready for, like Rosie's, like in year three, we're ready at the end and we're ready for our NQN. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a, like you have to have experience, but I think it's just great. So, um, so it helps you understand why you want to come to Norland and just makes you feel ready in a way. Wonderful. Um, Joe and Lou, well, Joe mainly, obviously you mentioned if a placement doesn't work out, are you available, you know, 20, not 24 seven, but are you available for, you know, pulling them out or, you know, what, what happens with that with regards to if it doesn't work out, what's the process? We are, with residential, we have, um, obviously we have like a, um, a mobile number and um, that's available Monday to Thursday to eight o'clock in the evening. So because the shift finishes at seven o'clock at night, if the students want to talk to us after the shift is finished, because it is such a demand in placement, um, we are on call to help the placements, um, to help the students. Um, during day-to-day -day placements, um, we are obviously office hours. Um, however, it has been known that I answer my emails at the weekend. So. <laughs> So we're always here to help you if it's all going wrong. We never let anybody suffer. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and this is for uh, both Rosie and Tippy. You mentioned obviously you obviously the choir, Rosie. Are there any clubs and societies that Norland offer their students? Or you know, tell us a bit about what you've what you've done over your time. And obviously Tippy as well. Obviously different restrictions this year. But what type of things can you expect to come to Norland and have that you know Norland experience, that university experience? So obviously I've been in the choir since first year and I'm now really privileged to be head of choir. I'm really sad that my choir's, my time in the Northern Choir is coming to an end. It's a really lovely sense of community and something I've enjoyed each week. And also I find the best part is going and seeing at all oh, like previous sets, graduations and things like that, because you sort of see like, it like really like encourages you in some ways. You see what they've achieved and yeah it really makes you persevere and like yes I can do that that just sort of you know if you've got a deadline coming be like I can do that and then it just makes you look forward to that next step um I've also done Macaton so baby sign language whilst at Norland and I said I did that in first year and then in second year I also did Spanish through Norland on top of my studies as well um as well just like to help learn different skills and things because you never know who you're going to be working with and also I think it's so important for children to like hear different languages even if you're just like counting number blocks with them I think it's really important to encourage that but yeah 
Yeah, and also, so for first year, I've never really had the experience of all the clubs, uh, but Norland do have a club, online club thing where you see all the lists. So I know that there is a book club and there's a sewing club. Um, they do have links with Basketball University where you can help join into those clubs, which is a really good network. Obviously this year it hasn't been that big because we haven't really been able to have the chance. Uh, but like Rosie, I've just finished the Spanish this year, which has been amazing. And it was on Zoom, but we were able to meet once and twice, which is really nice. Um, and it was quite another good chance to meet some of the other students because it's been quite hard this year to meet a lot of people. Um, but also as well, as well as all the clubs, which are amazing, normally give you the chance, if they haven't got a club, you can make it up yourself. So if they ain't got a netball club and you want a netball club, if you talk to Norn and they can really help you make the club. Um, so you can go to them and they can help you with some of the funding as long as you and help you find like a location. So it's really good um, thing. So if you ever want it, they can help you. And especially during COVID, it's a great time. So we also have like a representative team, which I'm a part of and we do help to organize events. So because things that we can have more than 30 people, um, they're doing things like picnics in the Royal Crescent. We've got a rounders thing coming up, I think it's tomorrow. Um, and there's just like, we can get, Norland will pay for Domino's. So it's free food, which for students is amazing. <laughs> exactly. So there is a lot going on. And if they haven't got it, it's an, you can, create it for yourself which is an amazing opportunity and that's the best thing about Nola being small is if you haven't got it you've got all the items there to make it for yourself fantastic that's wonderful uh Lucy we, we are running out of time I've probably got time for about two more questions so um this one's for Lucy obviously um as a Norlander um future career prospects of qualified Norlander nannies you know what are they are they you know are there a plenty to go around you know there are lots of opportunities having the Norlander nanny status behind you tell us a bit about that there is more than enough jobs to go around. Um, you know, as Rosie mentioned, even just for the NQN year, there's, you know, at least sort of three, four jobs per, per student. Um, and it's the same once you're qualified. Um, you know, I've had some, as I mentioned previously, you know, some incredible jobs through the Norland Agency. What's lovely about the Norland Agency is that, you know, they, they've potentially known you through your training um, and onwards, so you can build up that relationship with them. Um, you know, as I say, I've worked out in the Caribbean for a year. Um, that was through the agency. Um, I, you know, lots of nanny jobs in London. Um, they, Norland also offer uh, lots of CPD, so uh, continued professional development. So you can come back to college and do additional courses, um, top up your first aid training, all those sorts of things. Um, but yeah, the, as my parents said to me before I, I trained, you know, if you go to Norland, you'll never not be able to get a job. And, and that's the beauty of it. You know, if I wanted to, don't worry, Joe, I'm not, but if I wanted to go back to nannying tomorrow, you know, I, I could go out there and I could, I could find, I would have the pick of the jobs. Um, you know, there, there really are. But also I think the beauty of it is there's, there's different jobs for different people. You know, there are the, the high profile, the, the jet setting jobs, you can travel the world, you can do that sort of thing. But then there's also what I did for the majority of my career is just really normal families who need childcare, um, but want the best for their children. And they just need someone to look after their children while they're at work. And that's actually what I personally preferred to do. I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I say that having worked in the Caribbean, but I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't sort of someone who wanted to do all the traveling all the time, that sort of thing. But there, there are jobs for everybody. There's jobs for, you know, what you want. And I think, you know, touching a bit on what, what Rosie said earlier, actually, you can think you want to work with a particular age group or in a particular location, but the really important thing is getting that fit with the family. And if you find the right family for you, you know, you'll be there with them for years to come. Um, and it's, it is, it's just about finding the right family and there's lots of them. <laughs> Fantastic. I've got one last question and this is a very, very quick question for both Rosie and Tippy. Um, in your time at Norland, what have you enjoyed the most so far? Um, for me, it's probably the community. I think despite all the restrictions, um, nothing's really gotten into the way of having the support as well as having amazing opportunities still. And I'm not just saying that. Um, if you've watched the documentary, I say this to everyone, it literally is what it says on the tin. Like you watch the documentary, it's like, it's not like that. But like even Rosie can tell her, I think she went like skid pan driving today. They literally do do all of that. And it it's tiring. It is tiring and it's hard work, but I think that's what Norland is. But it's enjoyable at the same time. Um, yeah, very much that 
continued sense of community throughout whatever you're doing and obviously like placements has really shaped me as a practitioner in my early like early years and things like that um from being I think I was quite shy in first year now I'm much more confident and I go into families and I am able to offer what I believe is like the best for those children and for that family um and hi at the moment it's important we gosh we have done so much an important week it's like Tiffy said I've been skid pan driving today um off to shadow a fellow Norlander overnight tomorrow so in London um so in Norland off you the, the whole range of opportunities is what Norland offers you and that is just the best part wonderful if I had more time I would carry on thank you so so much um so that's it really that's our online done wrap session for placements um if you have any questions that we haven't managed to get through to or you have something that's really brilliant you come off the session and think oh my goodness I should have asked that you're more than welcome to email uh, inquiries at norland.ac.uk um, if you have any specific admissions queries with regards to applications or um, the type of course that you're doing please email the admissions team they'll be able to answer those questions for you please follow us on all the social media um, channels there's always amazing stuff being posted and in fact I think we saw some skid pan training on a tweet today so that was that wasn't you I don't think Rosie but it uh, was I'm on the Instagram story, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Wave to Rosie as she's going past in the car. Um, and, and that's it, really. We hope that you really enjoyed the session. I think everybody want to say thank you to Lucy, to Rosie, to Joe, and to Tippy for taking their time this evening to do that. Um, have a, a very safe and take care and enjoy the rest of the sunshine. And we'll hopefully see you again at the next uh, Norland Unwrap session. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.